Hi YouTube friends, today's episode is called How Wet Should It Get? And we're just going to talk about working with water as a watercolor painter. I think one of the hardest things at first is just to figure out how wet everything should be. And uh, you're either going to work too wet or too dry or not get your color rich enough. So let's just talk about the different kinds of um, saturation that you're going to get on your paper. Zoom right in. And uh, we're just going to start by talking about dry paper, obviously. And we're going to be quite dry here. I'm going to just start a little bit of green. And this is quite dry on my paper. And of course, when your paper is dry and your brush isn't very wet, and this is a big brush, so it still holds a lot of moisture, but you're going to see that little bit of skipping across your page. And uh, you're also going to see, I, as you can see, I'm, as I stroke across the page, you're seeing lines in my wash. And they're not disappearing. If we just left this, I think once it's completely dry, you're still going to see those brush strokes. If you're painting something like a sky, that's just a little too dry. So what you're going to want is to have a brush that's moist but not dripping. And uh, here's my brush straight out of the water. And if I hold it straight up and down, I actually am dripping on my paper. You can see a blotch there right, right where the water droplet fell. So that's too wet. So ordinarily what I'll do is once I've cleaned my brush, and this is a big brush, it's a Opus Allegro number 18 round. And uh, once I've cleaned my brush in the water, I just kind of blot that tip off so that it's still shiny wet. And I don't think, I don't know if you can see that, but it's still shiny and full of moisture. You know, if I were to squeeze it, I'm going to get water running out of it. But it's not dripping because I just grabbed that last little drop right off the tip. So it's a nice moist brush and it's great for picking up color. And I also keep my paint in my palette damp. I generally will spritz it with a water bottle before I get started. So my paint is already damped. I don't have to, I don't have to mess around with it. If I have a well in my paint tray that is quite dry, then I wouldn't take that drip off the end of my paper towel. I would just go right into that area of color and just start move, you know, brushing that color, moving it around. And often what I'll do, I'm working with the cadmium orange here is I'm just going to try to pick up as much color as possible. And now you can see my brush is still saturated with water and now at this point it's wet it's wet pigment and uh, but not dripping. So I can then go on to my paper and what I'm getting is instead of just having streaks of color there's actually a bit of a sheen to my paper and I'm not sure if you can see that. And, uh, but there's enough moisture so that if I tilt it, it does want to run a little bit. But, so it's enough that my brush strokes that are side by side, that are contiguous to each other, will run together. And so I don't get the streaks that I have in, had in my green that was too dry. So it's a shiny moisture that you want from your brush. Quite a moist brush. Of course, if you're too wet, that's the other side of it. And uh, often you'll get that when you're mixing up a puddle of color in your palette. So I'm just going to mix up a blue here. And I'm going to make a nice big puddle. I always try to have lots of color. This is going to be quite a pale blue. But if I start slapping that on my paper here, and I'll just go down to this area, there is a moisture that's too wet. And actually, even this is going to take a while to dry. Right away, if I tilt it, you can see it's, you can see the water running. And it's not terrible at this point, because I generally work fairly flat. So, you know, it will dry in a reasonable amount of time. That's still not ridiculously wet. But it's wet enough that, you're, that I'm going to start to get a funny edge here. And uh, it's starting to dry already. If I were to add some more, maybe I want to make that darker, so I'll go to add more color to it. And that's where it's going to start to get a little scary, I think. So 
So now I've got even more water in there and paint. And you can see how much look it's immediately starting to drip, which is a lot of fun if you're wanting to do some very fluid runny effects. So, you know, it's not like it's taboo. If you want your paint to run, you're going to need a lot of water. Another time when you're working with a lot of water is when is when you're painting wet and wet. And so we let's say our paper is wet. I'm just using clear water to wet down the area here. It's quite glossy. But if I have water sitting on the surface of the paper, it's going to be too wet and I'm going to get crazy stuff happening when I start to paint on it. You can see how quickly it runs. It's very wet. And so I'm not going to have a lot of control over what that color does and it's also going to dry very light. Generally when I'm working wet and wet, and I don't do it very often, I would almost rather start out with wet color like this and then use my brush to move that color across the page. Look at how much easier it is to control. And, and I decide where it stops running when I stop wetting the paper down with my brush. Anytime you're working with a paper that's already wet, you just have a little less control. And then this always, always with watercolor, your paint dries a little lighter than you put it down. And so you want to keep that in mind as well. When you're working with a lot of water, it's just going to dry a little lighter. Basically, there's three stages of moisture. And the last one I want to talk about is the point of no return is what I like to call it. And so we've got super wet, which is, you know, there's a puddle sitting on your paper, kind of like here, where you don't have a lot of control. It takes a long time to dry and you can still see the water just running across there. You've got it too dry, like our green one here, where you're getting streaks and the color won't blend evenly because it's just so dry and it makes it really hard to fill a large area of color. This blue that I had here is actually, I could still work with that a little bit. It's still shiny, so I could still take, it's starting to dry and get a little bit of an edge here, but I could still take a clean damp brush and move some of that color around if I wanted to. And I could even go in and add some additional color and let it blend. And that just gives me a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of freedom to get those fluid effects that I like. As you can see, it's as long as it's kind of shiny and wet, you can keep adding color. But there comes a point that I, like I said, I like to call it the point of no return. And that's when you've got an area of color like this one here. Once it loses its sheen, it doesn't have that shiny look anymore, but it's still damp. If you start to introduce water at that point, it's going to start to do little funny things. The water will actually push the color away. And I'll see if it'll do it here. This one's still a little bit damp. The water will start to push the color away. You can see kind of a bloom starting in this area. And uh, it'll be even more dramatic if it was a little bit drier. And so then you'll start to get a, an edge here. And uh, while a bloom can be fun to work with, if you're kind of trying to fix something to work with an area that's nearly dry but not quite, you're going to start to get those wonky edges and blooms. And it's going to start to look um, kind of scrubbed or fussed over. Just like actually this is a good example right here, this drip of water that landed on this green when the green was almost dry and you can see the edge that right there that that resulted, that little crisp area. You know, anytime you're wanting to layer color or water over a painted area, you want it to either be shiny damp so that you can allow the colors to blend and mix or you want it to be completely dry so that you can work over top of it without disturbing the surface too much. So like I said, we've got shiny wet, We've got um, almost completely dry, which is where you're going to get those brush strokes, which can be a good effect if you're wanting to work with dry brush. Or we have kind of that in-between point of no return. It's lost its shine. That's the time to sit down and let it dry and think about your next move in painting. So give, out, give those a try and uh, just learn to identify what your paint is going to do at those different um, wetness points.